Is artificial intelligence taking away our jobs or does it actually create new and improved opportunities for work? And is there a way to protect yourself from the competition that AI creates and work hand in hand with it? All this and more coming up now on Shift. Tony Elias from Nairobi, Kenya is a so-called ghostwriter. He produces academic texts for students all over the world and has already written 700 of them, earning his living this way. But then the AI tool ChatGPT came along. Everything went away abruptly. So even when you'd say next week or next month I will do this amount of work and, and get this amount of money, when ChatGPT came, it kind of reversed those plans. Because of ChatGPT and the opportunities it brings, the market for ghostwriters collapsed entirely. But where many of his colleagues saw the end of their careers, Tony was able to see an opportunity. I was a wake-up call that today you could be enjoying your, your, what you're doing to earn that living, but you don't know about it. So you have to be so versatile and so informed such that you understand uh, this is what it can do and this is its limit and as a human now I can go beyond this limit. Well, that's what I call positive thinking, despite massive changes in his industry. To be honest, there is plenty you can do to harness the power of AI in your own career. Take a look. Do AI models exist in your field? If so, it's time you got to know them. The skill that's most important is learn how to use these systems. Is learn how to how they work. Mastering these AI models will free up time that you could be using for more creative tasks. If you get ahead by learning how to enhance the, the best tools in artificial intelligence, and eventually they they prove to be very useful, uh, you will be in a very in a very good position. Programming skills are a prerequisite, especially Python, the foundation of many AI models. ChatGPT can write code, but... You have to have the ability to, to assess that the code is, is well written. That's very important. In the same way that ChatGPT uh, maybe returns a string of text and you realize that there, there are mistakes there, factual mistakes, the same thing can, can happen with code. Especially programmers in cloud architecture will be in demand. Their task is to integrate AI running on external servers into companies' existing systems. So-called prompt engineers are also in high demand at the moment. Prompts are the inputs you give an AI, and getting the result you want is an art in itself. Long term, this demand could decrease as AIs become better at understanding user needs. It's changing almost all jobs, but there are also some downfalls. They cannot plan, they cannot reason, they, they don't have common sense, they don't have a sense for how the, the real world works, like physics or causality, because those things cannot be learned from data. That's why AI must be used with caution. Ethicists who assess risk and societal impact of AI could become crucial. A process that has become hugely important with the AI boom is data annotation. It means describing as accurately as possible what is on an image, a text or an audio, for example. You've probably done this before yourself. You know those tests where you have to click on all the pictures that show buses, crosswalks or traffic lights? There are millions of data workers earning their money with similar tasks, sifting through and sorting different media. They essentially teach AI systems to make the right decisions. Some might find it a bit too boring, but for others, it could be that stable job they've wanted for a while. For Mujib Kolasari, data was the key to his career. Kolasari grew up in the Indian state of Kerala and started categorizing data sets from home, first for Amazon, then for his own customers. Today, he is the managing director of Infox, a company with over 600 employees in southern India. So we're teaching the human intelligence to a machine that is simply called uh, artificial intelligence. We also use machine learning. For example, a car without driver, a safe driving car, it is called autonomous driving. So in order to teach this machine or this car how to drive in a traffic, what is human, what is road, what is vehicles, we teach the machines 
by labeling annotating objects. According to estimates, the market for data annotation and labeling will grow by 33% annually until 2027. As a result, the need for employees to categorize data will also increase in countries such as India, Kenya, Argentina and the Philippines. The workers are in many cases outsourced, they are not in the same companies, in the same buildings, not even in the same countries in many cases as uh, the places where the models, the algorithms are produced. Data workers are often recruited from areas experiencing poverty, war or natural disasters, says Milagros Micheli. A typical data worker is a person who in many cases doesn't have many other options. So data work is, you know, uh, the best options among what is available. Infox is committed to giving men, women and people with disabilities the same opportunities. Since her father's passing, Roshni M needed to start supporting the family financially. This job feels like uh, giving, a, giving an individuality to me. Like, uh, I feel as an individual, like uh, I am earning now, I am uh, self-dependent and I have a freedom. Uh, like uh, a financial freedom is something different uh, if you are experiencing that. On average, the entry-level salary here is around 250 euros per month, along with social benefits like sick pay or maternity pay. It's good business for the international tech companies subcontracting to Infox. The work in itself is very, very demanding. So the myth that this is low skill, that this is easy, that this is just, you know, repetitive, uh, you know, boring work, is not like that. And the relevance of these workers for the whole uh, AI industry and supply chain is, you can not even put a number to that, is it, it's priceless. I love trying out all these AI tools and apps, but without the data workers, they wouldn't work nearly as well. How long will these jobs exist though? Could AI train itself? The numbers show that the fancier uh, our AI systems get, the more we need the input of humans and the more, more we need the input of humans at scale. Um, so I don't think that these workers will be obsolete at one point. There are plenty of things that AI can't do, like removing hate speech and violent images from social media feeds. This challenging work is still done by human content moderators. They're exposed to disturbing content daily, but there isn't much psychological support. In Kenya, content moderators have joined forces for better working conditions. We join a meeting between three former content moderators in Kenya, subcontracted by big tech companies to screen explicit content before it hits your screen. Mofat Ochien was a moderator for ChatGPT, Richard Matenge reviewed ChatGPT and Facebook content. It's so good to have you here. We all come here having a, the same objective. They say that even though they watched hours of disturbing explicit content per day, their jobs came with little to no mental health support. Mofat Ochien said the work left him feeling depressed and desensitized, which led to divorce from his wife. When he and Richard raised their concerns to management, they say the company laid them off in retaliation. That's why Richard Matenge and Mofat Ochien formed the African Content Moderators Union. The main purpose of the union is just to uh, bring uh, African youths uh, in tech together so that we can uh, have some good plans and how we can work together to bring change into the tech industry. Over 250 people came to the inaugural meeting held in March 2023. One of them was James Oyange Odiambo, who likes to be called Mo Jazz. He worked as a TikTok moderator for over a year. When he joined an outsourcing company, his employers did not explain in full what his role as a content moderator would be. His task was to check whether comments or videos that have been reported by users violate community guidelines. You have to check, like, did something go wrong and anything, and then now you say, um, it's good, you know. But uh, if a video is reported and then you see the sexual material or the uh, gruesome or, or, or horrific uh, content, you have to report it. 
Next, the moderators would label each reported video according to the policy it violated. With this blood, this is a column where a checkbox for depiction of blood. You know, if somebody is being beheaded, you know, you'll have a, a depiction of, you know, blood or um, mutilated human body, you know. So you have to like check the video on its, in its entirety and then you tag the, the basic videos. The former content moderator did this task around 1,000 times per day on a time limit that he had to meet or else the firm would dock his pay. If a video is like three minutes long, you have to do it in less than, you know, 16 seconds, you know, or 20 seconds and everything. Yeah, so that at least you have a proper um, average handling time. Mojas, Richard and Moffat find comfort in one another because of their shared experience as former content moderators. With this um, commonality, we want to, you know, have as much strength and galvanize as much support from all walks of life. They are all also pursuing legal action against the big tech companies they moderated for and the outsourcing companies that hired them, along with hundreds of other content moderators in Kenya. They are supported by Foxglove, a British non-profit that aims to make tech fair for everyone. We're really hopeful that the outcome of these cases will be that Facebook has to clean up its act and treat the workers who are, you know, those that are doing the work that make the platform usable, um, safe and fair. Richard Matenge has been honoured in Time 100 for his role in the world of AI. All three hope their stories will inspire young tech workers to fight for decent working conditions in the content moderation industry. In my opinion, it's important to create decent working conditions, especially in industries that are now emerging. And the tech industry is creating lots of new jobs, and not just in Silicon Valley, California. But big tech need to take on the responsibility to ensure that data workers and content moderators are treated fairly. Companies and users worldwide benefit enormously from their work. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.